Alright YouTube, it is Mr. Mean coming at you this fine Sunday morning about 9.30. Let me move this around like that. There we go. My camera's offset from my screen. So, good morning everybody. I hope everyone is doing well. It is snowing balls outside. Um, nothing I can do about that. But uh, I, I am showered. I've got my coffee in my Codex Seltarium mug. Good morning, everybody. A little sip of the Java to keep us going. Uh, let's get some housekeeping out of the way. Like, subscribe, support me on Patreon if you can. It's $5 a month. It gets you a drawing this month. We had a drawing for the Spell Shield Codex from uh, Dragon Shield, uh, G Kanks 1. So a big shout out to you, G Kinks. Uh, please get a hold of me. I've sent you an email through Patreon, uh, and uh, I'll get this in the mail to you, as well as some other goodies. Ooh, what could it be? We'll see. Anyway, this is pretty cool. If you shake it, the pen comes flying out. So don't shake it. Uh, I'll get the pen put back in there for you, G Kanks. But uh, yeah, I did a review on this. Check the archives and you can see the review. It wasn't for me. I thought it was a little overpriced, but check the review out and you can see all about it. But uh, it's it's a handy nifty. It's got a nice little magnet, you know, and everything. Um, so G Kanks won that. There's a couple things I want to talk about today. We're going to do a little RPG. We're going to do a little miniature painting talk. Um, because I've got something new. So anyway, um, first and foremost, uh, we're going to do the RPG stuff. Uh, there's a game that I've played for years uh, with my good buddy Brian Isaacoff uh, when I lived in California. Uh, and I've ran it a couple of times, different times. I ran a pretty decent campaign when I lived in Phoenix, Arizona for my buddy D-Train uh, and some other friends uh, for the local game store out there, Imperial Outpost. And by the way, if you're ever in downtown Phoenix, go check out Imperial Outpost. It is an awesome game store. Darren is the proprietor. Uh, and uh, it's a good piece. My buddy Nubby Mike hangs out there. Uh, Nubby, I love you, bro. I hope you're doing good. Um, yeah, go check it out. Uh, Imperial Outpost, pretty cool gaming store, uh, have everything you need. They're big into miniatures, they're big into hobbying, they have space, they have card games, they have miniature games, and of course, they have tabletop role-playing games. So it's a great gaming store, go check it out if you're in the area. Uh, anyway, and tell them Mr. Mean sent you. Um, one of the games that I am absolutely in love with, and I, I don't want to say I love every iteration of it, but I enjoy every iteration of it. And that is a little game called Legends of the Five Rings by John Wick, produced by AEG Entertainment, Alderic Entertainment Group. They are now defunct, I believe. I don't believe they're around anymore, or they're solely doing board games. I can't remember. But anyway, I'm going to be running this tomorrow night, Monday night, the 14th, 13th, March 13th, Monday night. Uh, I still have room for one or two players. If you're interested, let me know. If you know how to make a character and you have access to the second edition, please uh, check it out. Um, I don't know if you can see on the game shelf there, but I have first edition, second edition, the third edition D20 book, the fourth edition, which was the red covers, and then I have the new fifth edition uh, over here in this rack. You can see the uh, bing right there, the red uh, books by uh, Epic or is it Epic? It's the company that took over for uh, Fantasy Flight Games. Um, I was going to run that one Monday night, but unfortunately it uses proprietary dice uh, and my players would have had to have downloaded uh, an app to make it work. Um, and I just didn't, I didn't have enough time to read up on everything and figure it all out. So I... I went to act to something I know. I can run this with my eyes closed for the most part. Um, I love this game. I've got three three or four players right now, but one of them had to bail um, due to the storms in his area. Right? If anyone doesn't know, the Midwest and the East Coast is being pounded by snowstorms. I've got uh, probably a foot of snow outside. New, fresh, new snowfall that just fell last night. And we had super high winds. So, yeah, it's pretty ugly out here. Don't think I'm leaving the house today, that's for sure. But anyway, 
uh, Legends of the Five Rings. I've got room for one or two more players. Hit me up on my Discord. Links will be down in the doobly-doo uh, if you're a fan of this game. I really love it. Um, as I had to tell uh, my good friend Coronas on the Discord channel when I said Shugenja, and he said, no, it's pronounced something else. I said, in Japanese, it's that way. But Rokugan is not Jap Japan. Rokugan is Rokugan, and it is a fictitious world that is made up of many, many Asian and Western cultures. Uh, and Predominantly Asian, though, of course, being um, Japan and some China and some, uh, like, Philippines and stuff like that. So, anyway awesome game if you haven't played it um it's a really these books are getting hard to find but i believe the pdfs are on drive through which i'll do a shameless plug at this point and say please use my my affiliate code which is down in the doobly-doo uh and uh that's makes the channel a little bit of money and doesn't cost you anything extra so your help supporting mr mean and my ability to make these videos which i greatly appreciate and you know all that fun stuff um but if you can find these books, uh, if you're in Phoenix, Arizona, there's a great little used bookstore called Bookman's. And uh, you can pick up probably some of these books there, I, I would imagine. But anyway, check your favorite local game store. They may still have copies on the shelf. I, if this is from, oh, I don't even know the date on this. Let's see what, uh, what it is. 2000. Yeah, this was produced in 2000. Uh Written and compiled by uh, Ree Sosby, uh, based on Legends of the Five Rings, first edition, which was by John Wick, uh, from the original concept of David Say and John Zenzer. Uh, John Zenzer was one of the bigwigs behind Aldrich Entertainment, who's a super nice guy. Uh, I met him at Gen Con a couple of times, and uh, he gave me a couple free books and stuff. Uh, he is amazing, and he's autographed a couple of my books. So super cool guy, super nice. John Wick, super cool guy, super nice. Um, but yeah, first edition L5R, the system could be abused. Second edition, you could abuse it as well if you know the system really well, but hopefully my players don't. Um, and uh, I still think it's a fun game, even with the abuse. I think it's up to the GM to say, no, you can't do that. You know, um, let's do it a different way, you know, so we're not manipulating the rules to benefit us. But yeah, the, there's a player's guide and a Game Master's Guide in 2nd Edition. In 1st Edition, it was just one book, um, and it had everything in it you need, um, which I do have the collector's item, which is a leather cover that I got at Gen Con, which I had uh, John Zesner, John Wick, and a bunch of other people sign. So anyway, running this Monday night. Uh, um, this is a roll-keep system, so it, it's based off of Sun Tzu's uh, The Five Rings, um, and it's a fantasy, um, you know, oriental fantasy adventure. It's been published... Like I said, five, um, let me get over here, big dummy, uh, five uh, versions of this rule set. Now, the first edition, the second edition, which used these dice, the third edition, which was a D20 uh, variant, um, I was not a fan of it, uh, 3.5. Um, and then there was a fourth edition, uh, which they added, they just added too much to it, too many modifiers. Um, I think role-playing games should be fast. If you're into crunch, that's great. I'm into a certain amount of crunch, like Pathfinder is the perfect amount of crunch for me. I don't want any more. Um, this is this has got enough crunch in it to satiate my my GMing appetite, uh, so to speak. But it gives the players enough options. And, and when you level up in this game, it really feels like you're getting something. When you can increase a ring, which is your attributes, uh, when you can increase a trait, it really is impactful to your character. And it just changes everything you can do. So um, it lets you roll and keep more dice, and that's the point. So it's a D10-based system. Um, you don't use any other dice, so all you have to do is uh, roll with your D10s, uh, and, you know, you'll have, like, your fire ring will be three, and your kenjutsu skill will be two. So you're going to roll, uh, you're going to roll two dice, or you're going to roll three dice, and you're going to keep two. You know, it's that simple. It's roll and keep. So you're going to roll equal to... Your attribute, you're going to keep equal to your skill. I could have it the reverse. I'm, I'm, I'm foggy. I've got to reread the rules. But I believe it's, you roll, I think it's, see, now I'm second guessing myself. I don't remember. And I'll have to go back and check it. It's, it's, but it's the base mechanic of the game. And I just, I can't remember. I have so many games in my head. I run so many games. Um, it's so different. But um, it's, it's a really awesome game. Um, and to my, in my opinion, there's only, as a GM, there's only three books you need. You need the Game Master's Guide. Your players need the Player's Handbook. 
of the player's guide. And of course, the GM should have a copy of that as well, because you need to know what your players can do. Um, but as far as the GMing to run this game, you need the GM's survival guide. Now, I don't have a good copy. I have this copy that I bought at, I believe I bought this at Bookman's, if I remember correctly. Um, and it was mangled. The spine was mangled. And so I brought it at the time. There were Kinko's stores. Now, I think they're all UPS stores now. But I brought it to Kinko's. And there's a horrible glare from that plastic cover. So there you go. You can see the cover. It's a, it's a nice cover. Um, GM Survival Guide. This is a fantastic book. And it has um, wonderful art in it. And it just has so much information in it for running a game of L5R. <laughs> I've still got my my given names. This is great because what's... Here's an N. Oh, there's a, oh, the book tree, a local bookstore that I used to peruse. Uh, in Scottsdale, Arizona. <laughs> You find all kinds of stuff, but here's a list of given names and everything. So uh, I don't know how many times I've been a GM sitting at the table and someone go, oh, well, what, you know, you're talking to the guard. Well, what's his name? Uh, well, now you can you can have the player roll a D100 and you can go, his name is uh, Sumatsu. You know, I, roll, I rolled a uh, I rolled a 29, so his name is Sumatsu. Uh, and so, yeah, you can you can do cool stuff like that. And this book has a lot of cool information in it. So this is, I think, a, a must-have for any L5R GM, any fantasy GM. This is not a good book that uh, is a is a good book to have as well. And then your players need adversaries, and what what better adversary than the Shadowlands? So you have to have, as uh, me and Brian used to refer to this, Oni no Skippy book, because when we first bought this book, it smelled like peanut butter. It really did. And it kind of still does. Um, I don't know the, the manufacturing or the glue or whatever they used. Um, it smells like peanut butter. Um, and so we used to joke and make fun of Oni no Skippy, which is uh, the Onis in L5R. That's what they call their minor demons. But the art in here is fantastic. I mean, here's some goblins, you know. And like I said, this is a fantastic book. If, if you don't have this book, I highly recommend it. Here's an ogre. You know, so um, let's see. I'm trying to see if I have any other bookmarks. Onis. Uh, what's neat about this book, as opposed to this book, was reprinted in a couple of other uh, versions of the game. I still think this is the best version, um, just because of the layout um, and the way it was presented. Uh, Oni no Ashi. You know, um, so this gives you rules for creating your own Oni. Uh, which I think is amazing. So, yeah, definitely a must-have in your GM repertoire. Um, so, yeah, it's a game that doesn't get enough love. Like I said, I can't speak too much to the um, Edge. That's who it is. It's Edge uh, is doing the new uh, Fantasy Flight books. I can't speak too much to Edge. Um, I did read it a little bit. Presentation-wise, the book is beautiful. I, I give it to the guys over at... Uh, Fantasy Flight, uh, they they did a great job. Um, but I, I, the funky dice, D12s and D6s, I mean, to me, L5R is a D10 game. I don't know why they did D12s. Um, so if you don't know, the new Edge version uses two sets of dice, one for your rings, one for your traits. Or one, your traits are your rings. You have two traits that make up a ring. Legends of the Five Rings, you have five rings. Um, and you have two traits, uh, and usually they're opposites in some way, shape, and form. And so when you're rolling uh, an, a trait, you know, say strength, that'll be your earth ring. Um, so if, you're, if your traits equal or the same, like, like everybody's uh, rings or traits start at two, so your ring is a two, and then you can spend experience points to upgrade it from there. Um, and you have skills, and your skills will be, you know, one to whatever. 1 to 10, I believe, is what they're going for. I, I, I'm not quite sure on the new version. First edition only went to 1 to 5. Second edition went uh, bumped it up to 1 to 10. Uh, so it's cool and everything, but I don't know why they went D12s. I just, I, I don't get it. I think they wanted to make it easier to distinguish between your, your, your traits and or rings and your skills. I believe skills are rolled on D6s and traits are rolled on D12s. What, to me, it's just it's more confusing. D10s, pick up, you know, you got a dice pool of five. You can keep three of them. It's not hard. Reroll tens, reroll ones. Ones are bad. Tens are great. They explode. You know, ones explode negatively. So if you roll a one, you roll it again. You subtract from your total. Um, 
if you roll if you roll a 10 you re-roll and add to it you keep rolling tens if it goes uh it's a simple easy elegant system uh and i don't know why they felt they had to muck with it and uh change it to d12s and d6s i get they wanted to make it their own and make it unique and different which i think they did i'm not saying it's bad but i don't i just i didn't have time to digest it fully to run it to to play a game that i felt com comfortable running ah, so that covers l5r what i wanted to talk about with l5r if you haven't checked it out go check it out um, I'm not set up yet to record properly, um, record my game sessions, but I'm working on it. Um, and if anybody has any good software or good tips for a Mac, please put them down in doobly-doo or reach out to me at Mr. Mean Speaks with an S at gmail.com. I, I really would like to start recording some of my uh, game sessions. Some of them are pretty fun. We had a great low fantasy gaming uh, session and we had a really good... Um, uh what's the other one? Oh, we didn't get to run interface zero it, it, or we did we did and it was a we only had two players though um so unfortunately that part didn't pan out for us but uh yeah so monday night room for one to two more players if you're interested and you want to try legends of the five rings reach out to me we're going to make rank one characters we've already made i've made three characters one of the players can't play uh, so I will give that character to somebody else and I'll probably make another character tomorrow, uh, at some point if I get home or something, uh, I don't know, or maybe even later today, since it doesn't look like nature is going to let me go anywhere due to this lovely snow blizzard that we are in right now. Um, so pause, go get a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, potty break, whatever you need to do. We're going to switch gears and we're going to go to the miniature side, um, cause I got two things I want to talk about. Well, three things I want to talk about. Um, I am a, a big fan of miniature painting. And so I have, uh, I bought a cheap airbrush about three years ago, two years ago, three, two or three years ago, um, a Masters Siri airbrush. I bought it off of Amazon or eBay, I can't remember. And it came with the airbrush, it came with a compressor and a hose. Uh, basically everything you need to get started. It came with three airbrushes, actually. Two of them were kind of garbage. They were One was a gravity fed, one was a siphon feed, um, which siphon feeds aren't very good for miniature painting because you're changing paint so often. If you're painting large mass battles and you can fill up the paint pots, you know, and, you know, put your colors in there, then it's fine. But uh, it's, it's not the paintbrush that most miniature painters use. They use a standard gravity fed airbrush. So anyway, I bought the master's airbrush in the kit. The compressor I'm still using to this day, it works like a champ. I've never had any problems with it. Um, but the master's airbrush got clogged. I cleaned it pretty regularly, you know. Um, I took pretty, I'm very good care of it. Um, but it, you know, it just, it wore out. And um, I, I prime, and I was only priming with it. I didn't use it to paint miniatures. I don't feel that I'm that good. Um, but I primed some miniatures with it and, you know, used it for priming a lot of miniatures and stuff like that. But it finally gave up the ghost and died. And so I bought a Neo Iwata or an Iwata Neo paintbrush. And I love it. It's a very beginner friendly, easy paintbrush to work with, but it didn't have, um, it didn't have the precision that I kind of wanted. I was trying to paint some small stuff one day on a miniature and it just wasn't getting it for me. And I, I didn't know if it was that my needle was too big or my pressure was too low or too high or whatever. And I watch a lot of videos. Vince Ventrillo is amazing um, in his talks about airbrushing. Um, Uncle Tom is uh, is really good too uh, uh, for for miniature painting because he's he just wants tabletop quality and get it ready. And that's that's where I'm at. I'm not. I don't want to spend six days on painting a miniature. Um, or 60 hours. You know, I just want to get it tabletop ready and play with it. I want to play with my toys. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry about that. Um, and I know a lot of miniature painters out there that use airbrushes have more than one airbrush for different purposes. And I was looking at a, a lot of different miniature uh, specific airbrushes. And I used to do demo work for Reaper years ago. I used to, uh, they had a miniatures game. It's still available. It's just nobody plays it. It's called Warlord. And it's a really good miniatures game. And of course, it uses all their their uh, 
uh, miniature line, and now they're all in, um, you know, whatever their new uh, white plastic is, their PVC plastic. I forgot what they call it. Bones. There we go. So it's amazing. Um, you know, Warlords is a great miniatures game. If you've never played it, I highly recommend you pick up a copy. It's dirt cheap. Um, and it's 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 a really good miniatures game. It's a skirmish level game. And there's a bunch of different factions, dwarves, uh, necrotites, I believe is what they're called. Uh, um, there's demons. I mean, it's it's got everything. Humans, uh, elves, dwarves. Uh, but anyway, long story short, I did a lot of demo work for them. And so I got on their mailing list. And I've been on their mailing list for years. Um, my oldest son was like three years old when I started working for them. He is now 23, 24. So yeah, that, that tells you how long I've been doing this. <laughs> I've been miniature painting. Um, so the cool part was I, I looked for a bunch of different miniatures and I, or miniature specific airbrushes. And I remember Reaper had put one out. And so I went and I looked at it and it was the Reaper uh, Vex. And this is done, um, it is made by, oh, I can't remember the name of the guys. Sterner and Bach, maybe? Or, ah, there's another one. But it was designed by Reaper, and they sent a bunch of test models out, test airbrushes out to people, um, and then got all their feedback from these miniature painters. Some of them were their in-house painters that they use, and some were just, you know, random YouTubers that paint a lot of miniatures with airbrushes. And so they they got their, their feedback. And um, what they came up with in the final was this, the VEX Professional Series Airbrush. Uh, Reaper VEX D model, deep paint cut. Um, and you get everything in here. It's made in the USA, which to me, that's a big thing. But what I, and you get it in this awesome case, which is nice. Now, what I did, uh, where is it? Here it is. Ah. Ah. Before we jump onto that one, like I said, I did a lot of work for Reaper and uh, I painted a lot of miniatures for them back in the day. Um, cause I, like I said, I would run Warlord at conventions and stuff. Um, so I got a couple of these and of course there's my DRPA, Duncan Rhodes Painting Academy, uh, cause I use his paints and I also love the Army Painter, uh, contrast paints or, um, oh, what do they call them? The Army Painter Speed Paints. I don't have the new 2.0 set. I still have the 1.0. But I love them. So anyway, they sent me this uh, paint kit, and I and I still have these Reaper paints, by the way. These Reaper paints are 23, 24 years old, and they're just as good as the day I bought them. The Reaper paints have held up really well over time. Um, when I did the uh, uh, Two Thin Coats uh, Kickstarter, I got a bunch of uh, uh, metal balls, ball bearings basically, to put in your paints, agitators. So I went through all my Reaper paints that I decided to keep and I put I put those in there. So yeah, they're still going strong. But I didn't have a good case for my Iowata. So what I did is I super glued this to the bottom. And as you can see, there's my airbrush. It's glued in there. It has a safe home. I can travel with it. I can put a couple paints in here if I need to. And I can close this up. And I can I can take it with me. I've got a little hobby case to go wherever I need to go. Because I thought it was a cool case, and I didn't want to—I didn't want to waste it. So, fast forward to—I wanted a new airbrush. This is a two hundred dollar airbrush. Um, you buy it online. You buy it from Reaper. It is two hundred one ninety nine. I was in the game store the other day, uh, over in Superior Level Up Games. Shout out to those guys—they are awesome. Uh, and he gave me twenty five percent off. He's got like four of them in the cabinet. So if you're looking for one of these, and they are getting hard to get. Uh, reach out to Level Up Paints that love, or Level Up Gaming. They're on Facebook, and I'm sure he'll work out a deal with you because um, he's trying to get rid of them. Uh, he doesn't sell a lot of paintbrushes. But what I liked about this is you get your case, and it's all foamed up, and you get this is what's cool. Everything you need is in here. Um, so you get... Two needles, an A and a B, um, a thin needle. I think it's a 0.2 and a 0.3 or a 0.4. I can't remember. Um, and then, of course, the, the piece de la resistance. I haven't used this yet. You can see I still got the, the, the tape on it, but this is the Vex, and it's just a gorgeous paintbrush. Um, you can see it even says 
vex on there get this in the right light and there's a cap on it oh i'm not going to fight with it to get it off now but yeah gorgeous um really nicely done very well put together i have watched a lot of reviews on it um and they all speak very highly of it so it's a great uh paintbrush and from what I understand, the two needles that you get, you really only need one of them because the needles are very precise and the, the airbrush is uh, precisioned really well. So, yeah, um, you, can't, you can't beat it. So, yeah, you get, uh, you get a micro detailed needle and a general detail needle. And from what everything I've read, the general detail needle is all you need. It will do everything you want. So that micro needle, you can just leave it in there and keep it as a spare. Um, I don't know if they'll work in other airbrushes because they have this little nub on the back and I don't think that would interfere with too much, but just to be on the safe side, I, I wouldn't futz too much with it. But very happy. Got it for like $175. Um, it's a very nice airbrush. I've, it's got good reviews and I'm very happy with it. And the reason I wanted a new airbrush is because I want to do some more detail work. And this is a limited edition miniature. This is a... Um, uh, it was either a bodyguard or a security guard for um, uh, Infinity. And I just got a backpack on and I primed them in gray. Um, and it's an awesome looking miniature. And I want to I get this painted up. I have a ton of Infinity min minis. I have Yu Ching and I have a bunch of Nomad miniatures. Now they're the old Nomads and Yu Ching from before they started using CO Cast, which is what they're pr producing miniatures in now. So I want to get the new CO cast miniatures and I want to start uh, painting them. Because my buddy Darren here in Duluth also plays Infinity and so I've got someone to game with. But the other thing I wanted to talk about was Conquest, the last argument of Kings. This is, a, it's not new, it's been out for about two, maybe three years now, but it's, it's getting more and more press. And I've been, watched a number of gameplay videos, and i got to say I'm impressed. I'm not into large-scale battles with rank-and-file troops. But one of the things you can do with Conquest Last Argument of Kings is they have these bases. Oh, I, I didn't open them. So they have these bases. You can see there's a big square base, and then there's a bunch of, like, 28-millimeter bases. And I don't know how well you can see that because of the glare of the plastic. But... The round bases go inside the square bases, a la game, uh, Fire and Ice, the uh, Game of Thrones miniatures game. So you can play squad-based games, skirmish-level games, or you can play rank-and-file games. It depends on what your gameplay is and what you want to do. And each, each box of miniatures comes with a card. Because you use these, use these cards in your activation phase, you, you, you stack them in the way that you want to activate your units when it comes to your turn. And then you'll see there's a QR code on there. The QR code will give you a free copy of the rules. The rules are free. So go check this game out. Uh, Conquest, The Last Argument of Kings. There's, I think, five factions right now. The Dwegum, which are dwarves. The Wardrune, which are orcs. Uh, and they're orcs that ride dinosaurs. I can't begin to tell you how effing cool that is. Um, these miniatures are not put together. I bought this box, and I've yet to put it together. But you can see on the back there, there is what they look like. And this is their first production run. So the detail on here isn't as as crisp as the new stuff. They have uh, the old, the new dominion. I think it's the new dominion or the old dominion. There's two different factions, and they're basically Grecian, uh, like hoplites and and uh, all of the um, phalanxes and stuff for like a Greek army. And their their god went batshit crazy. And but before he did, they got away before the god could kill them all. And so they set up these different like city states and governments. And so there's different factions, um, and it it. I haven't played the game yet. I've watched a number of battle reports. I've read the rules, the skirmish rules, and I really like them. They have an army builder on their site that's for free. It's web-based, so you need an internet connection. The rule book for the skirmish rules are free, and for the uh, mass battles are free. You can download them. They're on 2.0 now, uh, and there's rumors that there's another version coming out. Like a two, I don't know if it's going to be a 2.5 or a 3.0. 
they're also ramping up their production quality of their miniatures. So like these guys, these Huskarls, which these are the Nords, so they're basically Vikings, and I am of German descent, so I had to go with the Vikings. But I'm going to tell you, that New Dominion or old whatever the Greek uh, warrior ones are, boy, they're tempting me really hard. And I think I may switch back. This is the only miniatures I have for the Nords because I wanted to buy a box and just see what the quality was. And the quality is good. It's just not as crisp as the new miniatures because this was under their old production value. And as they've gained more money and sold more models, they've been able to increase their production value. And so they've done a bang up job. These are no slouch. I'm going to enjoy painting these as well because uh, they're big Viking warriors with shields and, and, uh, and, and big weapons. So I'm down with that. But if you haven't heard of Conquest, The Last Argument of Kings, I highly recommend you check it out. I'm going to try to put a link down in the doobly-doo uh, because I think it's, it's really worth it. In fact, I'm going to go to their website right now. Par it's Parabellum Games. And uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll see what this new faction is. Uh, factions, here we go. So we have the Old Dominion, which are... This is going to sound weird, but they're aliens that crash-landed on this planet thousands of years ago and started messing with the genetic uh, of people, and then their technology and their ships failed and stuff, and it's weird. It's a very weird uh, background. You have to just kind of read it for yourself. The Dwegum are the dwarves. They're not nice. Uh, the Wardrun, which are the uh, orcs, basically. They're orcs riding dinosaurs. You can't get any fucking cooler than that. Their big miniature is a giant T-Rex with a spell... I think it's a spellcaster, or and it's a female. Their, their leader is a woman, uh, which I think is super cool. And she's riding a giant dinosaur, so you, you, you can't go wrong. Um, the city-states, that's the new... Um, that's the new uh, faction, the city-states. And that's, like I said, like the Grecians. Uh, then you have the Hundred Kingdoms, which are the humans. Uh, and then the Spires are the alien ones I was talking about. So the Old Dominion. Let's see what the Old Dominion. I don't remember all their factions. Yeah, these guys are uh, uh, the Old Dominion. Ziliarch and the Archimandrite. Yeah, they are just weird. They're kind of Grecian undead, uh, you know, uh, weird I don't, I don't know the best way to describe them. Uh, the Hundred Kingdoms are your humans. Uh, I believe the city-states are your, like, Roman-esque guys. Let's get rid of the Old Dominion here. Yeah, these are your Roman guys. So they are super cool. Um, let's, you know what? Let's go to screen and webcam here. Let's, there we go. I'm going to make me smaller. There we go. So. This is the, uh, well, let's start at the top. Uh, let's undo this. And we'll go Old Dominion. So Old Dominion are the leftovers from the race that was before, and they're just crazy. <laughs> There's no other way. But you can see these models are absolutely gorgeous. You know, look at this guy. I mean, look at that. That is amazing, you know. I mean, look, that is just super neat. And like I said, they're undead. So, yeah, not not something you want to run into, if you know what I mean. Um, so, uh, let's see. Let's go back. Uh, the I'm not going to go through all of these. Uh, the city-states are the one that I'm interested in big time. Now... Uh, I think $32.99 for a set of dice looks like 10 dice, maybe. Maybe it's more. I don't know. 25 dice. Okay. So $32.99. $33 for 25 16 millimeter dice. Not horrible. A little bit on the steep side, but I think if you want that feel, you know, you, you get it. But look at this guy. This is the Astriarch. And, um, I mean, is that not... Look at that. Look at that shield. And so they... They have um, cyber, a little bit of cybernetics, is, I guess, or gear, gear, uh, gear punk in them. Uh, so you can see his shield looks like a big cog. And I'm telling you, super cool stuff. So that's that's one of the leaders. That's a resin model. I'm really hoping they go to CO cast. Um, I don't know if that's something. This is your uh, your pole mark. 
uh, which he's the leader of the infantry guys, um, and he's just a badass. So you can see, let's see, let's see if it throws that up. Yeah, I mean, and here we can look at that. Tell me that wouldn't be beautiful to paint. That's just a gorgeous model. I mean, and of course, you know, I would leave the arm off and paint it and then go from there. So super cool stuff. So anyway, I didn't want to go through all of them, but this is something I'm looking to get in. And even if I don't get to play it, um, I've got Infinity. I'm going to paint those Infinity models. I'm, I'm starting to rebuy the new Infinity stuff because I don't. I'm just not wild about the metal miniatures, um, and the new the new CO cast miniatures are looking awesome. So hopefully, as they start moving forward um, on that, I'll, uh, I'll I'll get into it a little bit more. I'll switch back there. Thank you. Um, so yeah, um, just amazing stuff. Um, and then switching gears, I'm a huge Blood Bowl fan. I, my friend Darren, the guy who I play um, a lot of miniature games with, he turned me on to Blood Bowl because I didn't know anything about it. And I'm not a huge Games Workshop fan. But Grebo is a company, and I want to give a huge shout out to Grebo Miniatures. Um, they, uh, they make super high quality CO cast or Grebo, they call it Grebo Knight, but it's CO cast basically. Uh, they make these awesome miniatures uh, for Blood Bowl. And I'm a huge Nurgle fan. Anytime I can do anything with Nurgle, I'm all over it. So they sent this to me, and it comes in a, in a nice little sleeve that you can actually pop open, and there's stuff on the inside. And then, of course, the, the box. The presentation quality was really good. And I'm not going to go through these 100%. I just want to show you guys some of them. The pack packaging is top-notch. We got some formed plastic, and it's got their little logo on there, Grebo. Um, and then you pop this open, and then the miniatures are in here, and they are amazing. So here's one of the Beastmen, or Beastagores, and I don't know how well that's going to show up on the camera. But there's a Beastagore. I mean, and the quality is amazing. Um, so I can't wait to get these guys. Uh, see, do I got to... Oh, here's one of the... There's... Is a Nurgle guy with a Nurgling bump bumping out of his stomach. So I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, that's amazing. So anyway, uh, and, oh, and then your your token for your symbol. Um, just really well done. Um, very just ecstatic to have this. Uh, it was not cheap. It was over over a hundred bucks, but it was worth it. I have the Games Workshop box set, and um, while I like them, I'm not enamored with them. Um, and I, I've been wanting these guys, but they only, they originally only had them in metal. I can't get my shit together here. Um, they originally only had them in metal and I don't like metal miniatures. Uh, I'd rather deal with plastic or CO cast or resin. Even resin sucks, but I, you can see I have a, I have a face mask up there for dealing with resin. Um, whenever I'm sanding resin or drilling on it or anything like that. So yeah, so that's what's going on with the channel, guys. It's going to be some miniatures. I'm going to try and set up, um, thanks to my buddy uh, Nubby. He sent me a spare camera, uh, and I'm going to try to set that up. I've got an armature that I'm going to mount on my hobby table here, and I'm going to try to get some miniature painting done and record it because um, I think it's fun, and um, I, hopefully it'll all work out well. So if you guys want to see that, if you're interested in that, uh, let me know if you really want to support it and become a Patreon member and support me that way. That would be awesome because that'll give me more money to do this. <laughs> anyway, uh, so Dominion or uh, Conquest, Last Argument of Kings, Skirmish, as well as a uh, rank and file game. So if you're, if you're a, a skirmish gamer like me, it suits that need. And if you want to jump up to the big mass battles, you can. Uh, Infinity. They look like they're going the way of CO cast. I'm super excited for that. Uh, I love all their miniatures. I love the metal miniatures. They're just fiddly and a pain in the ass to put together. And I don't have the time or the patience to do it anymore. I want to be able to just get them out, prime them, base coat them, and, and be done and start playing. So that's what's coming up on the channel here pretty soon. I hope you enjoyed the L5R content. If you're a miniatures gamer, I hope you enjoyed the miniatures content. I'll try to put a timestamp in there uh, where we jump from RPG to miniatures. So as always, like and subscribe. Peace and hair grease. And remember, Mr. Mean says, be nice. We're going to fade to black here, guys.
I hope everyone does well. And uh, let me know what you think of the uh, of the uh, airbrush and the miniatures. And uh, if you're into L5R, like I said, I got room for one to two more. So hit me up on the channel. Links are down in the doobly-doo. Peace.